Sometimes I wonder why in the world did I have to be born with such a stroke of tough luck? No kidding, I'm the kind of guy whose day won't go by without experiencing something hapless for the day. Whenever my day goes even a bit better, the next one goes worse than others. Sometimes I feel like I'm a magnet to all the bad luck in the world. If someone saw me, they would think of the day when it rained on my way back to the apartment, making me completely drenched, and then some car splashed water all over me as it drove away, to be the worst day of my life. And even though I did catch a cold after that, I had seen worse days to be bothered by that one. But little did I know back then that my ill fate had a little surprise for me hidden in its pocket. Something that would change the course of my life. Well, with Corona being back and forth, no one wanted a coughing employee in the office, so I had to take leave for the time I was sick. It took three days for my cold to get better, and as soon as it did, I was finally ready to resume my work. But just like Milo Murphy, my backpack had most of the precautionary measures for the situation I could end up in, and so I added an umbrella to it too, just in case it were to rain again. After dressing up and having my breakfast, I exited the house, locked it after me, and decided to walk, not to take my old car again, since it could break down any minute on the road. Yes, if you're wondering, I was that unlucky. I wasn't surprised to see that nothing happened on my way to the office, throughout working hours or when I got off work, but I was a little scared when I wasn't faced with any grim situation the entire day, and realized that the next day was going to go worse than it was supposed to. Nothing of such sort happened the next day, either raising my concern over it since it had never happened before. Two days in a row. It could only mean that the third day was going to get disastrous, and my fright meter was only getting higher. I was jumpy all day, overthinking every little thing that could go wrong, but no dreadful event happened that day either. At this point, a thought crossed my mind. What if my fate had finally taken a turn? Well, it was instantly taken over by the terrible feeling of something very bad could happen on the fourth day. When the next three days went unusually normal as well, I was like, maybe my luck really has changed, and maybe I was just overthinking things. I still decided to wait for the day to end to get my jittery feeling. It was about 10 p.m. when I finally thought of treating myself for almost completing a week without getting in any sort of trouble. So I got out of the house at night without thinking of consequences and walked to the Popeye's chicken outlet that was around the block. They usually closed by that time, but on Saturdays, they would be open till 11.30 p.m. So when I got there, I realized once again that my luck hasn't run out yet. I ordered the most expensive meal on the menu and savored every single bite of it with joy in my heart, since having days like this was kind of a big deal for me. After I was done eating, I ordered another one for the takeout and started waiting for it to be prepared. As I was doing that, I thought while I was at it, I should treat myself to a little more because you never know if I could go back to the same old crappy days again. I took my field and decided to rent some spicy stuff from the local DVD store. But as I was walking there, I saw a man squatting down around the parking area doing something. And since it was so dark, I couldn't figure out what it was from the distance. So I decided to walk a bit closer to see if the poor man needed any help. But as I did, my heart dropped, and the emotion of regret started to take over my senses. The feeling that stayed here would bring me no good was so strong and even in such a dire situation, my legs just decided to go numb. The man felt my presence and turned to me. Trust me when I say this, but the moment this man's eyes met mine, he lit up and his mouth formed the evilest toothy grin I had ever seen in my entire life. I was regretting my decision to ever go out of my apartment this late at night as I looked at the bloody knife he was holding in his hand and the man lying in front of him who was stabbed to death. Who's there? It was the store clerk's voice who I recognized pretty well and before I could turn to tell the guy, I heard the word catch and automatically my hand caught the knife he threw at me, resulting in blood splattering all over my face in the process. Before I could scream or say anything, he disappeared, and the clerk flashed the light on my face, which followed his face to go through the same expressions I went through a few minutes ago. No, 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 I didn't do this. As I said those words, he ran to the store and called 911 on me. I couldn't understand what to do, 
There were no security cameras installed there. I had no idea how to prove my innocence. My hands and legs were shivering like crazy by now. There was no way I was going to run away in that situation, so I decided to stay and try to explain to the cops what had transpired there. But now I understand why my luck was going so well for the past week. It was because of this point when I got framed for murder by a psychotic stranger. Without believing a word I said, I was immediately taken into custody, and the body was taken for autopsy. Adding to my dread, no fingerprints were found on the body, and only mine were found on the murder weapon, the knife which I foolishly caught when the actual murderer threw it at me. Only if I had let it stab me. Maybe I would have survived, and even if it didn't, at least I wouldn't be charged for something I didn't do. I was declared the culprit and was sentenced to 28 years of prison life, even after my multiple pleas of being innocent. And as here I am serving my sentence, I know that man must be committing some heinous crime and getting away with it. Oh, how I wish for that man to die such a death, even he wouldn't have imagined it. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. Popeye's chicken? No, I'll pass. I held a hand to my mouth as I replied. The reason was an unpleasant memory of the past that had just rushed to the surface upon the mention of the restaurant's name. Why are you making such an expression? Leia threw the same question at me about what anyone asks in that situation. Trust me, you don't want to know. I said while trying not to think of that flashback that was making me nauseous. Try me. If there's something that's making you not want to go non-veg, I'd want to know. Her lips formed a smug smirk as she said that. Well, it was surely going to be wiped off after hearing my story. Well, I didn't want to remember it, but if you want to know, be my guest. I shrugged my shoulders while saying that. After that, I began to tell her about the day, which started as one of the less nice days. Like most working people, my weekends are often shitty, and since I couldn't even complain about it, I would just go stuff my face during each lunch break. That was a different matter, and even after my constant food consumption, I would still look like skin and bones to others, and then they would suggest I eat a little more. This part would always be funny to me. Only Leia was the person who knew just how much I was capable of eating in a single day. That day was as rotten as any other since it went off with my team leader making an uncomfortable joke about how wafer thin my legs were. I swear to God, if it wasn't for my job, I would have knocked that nasty piece of work's teeth out. But all I did was gulp my coffee and get back to work with all the fueling rage locked inside. I thought, maybe if I ignore that annoying shit, my day would just go on without any trouble. But it was wishful thinking on my part to assume that. That ogre in the team leader's skin came again to irritate me by giving me the work which he was supposed to do, while again throwing words on my sliminess. I gritted my teeth and cussed him numerous times inside my head, but I still did whatever work I was given. Guess that was the main reason people thought of me as a pushover since I would always do everything despite making faces over it and swearing at them in my thoughts. After I was done with his work, I went back to finish mine and as a result, I had to work over the hours once again. By the time I completed everything, it was already 9pm and my mood was foul, so I decided to fill my belly to lift the dark clouds over my head. There was a Popeyes outlet near my company, which I hadn't tried yet, and as I was exiting, I turned toward it thinking I wouldn't leave the restaurant without burping all the anger out of me. While walking, I noticed the area was unusually quiet with almost no one in the area. Even the parking lot of the outlet had not a single vehicle around. Looking at the time, it wasn't that late for people to hang around at a food place, so it was hard for me to get my head around why it was the opposite. The moment I walked inside, I somehow got the idea of the actual reason behind the bare minimum sociality in the area. The carpet that was placed on the inside door was black, but just by looking at it, I could tell that the color was supposed to be different. There weren't many staffs around, just a cashier on the counter, and by the looks of it, there was only one server girl, and possibly a cook in the kitchen. They were so focused on their phones that they didn't even notice me walking in. 
Trust me, I was thinking of turning back, but the guy noticed me and said a welcome with his lips forming into a wide smile. I couldn't turn back now, so I walked over to him and ordered medium fried chicken wings and a large coke. After paying for the items, I went to take one of the empty seats and started to scan the restaurant. There were webs in the upper corner of the walls, along with a few spot marks on them. The floor looked like it hadn't been cleaned in days. The only clean things among everything seemed to be chairs and tables. I wondered if anyone ever came into this outlet, and judging by the condition, how come it wasn't closed yet? This outlet was not taking care of hygiene properly, and I was guessing the condition of the kitchen might have been similar. Even after waiting for half an hour, when no one came out with my order, I got up and asked at the counter how much longer was it going to take. And after saying five minutes more, the guy went back to focus on his phone. No wonder this place was empty. My day had already been one heck of a disaster, and I didn't want it to get any worse, so I decided to take out my phone and silently record everything. As the cashier was already on their phone and the server girl had gone into the kitchen, I decided to sneak there and check what in the world was going on. And as I did, I was horrified by what I saw. Rats and cockroaches were crawling around like it was their home, and dirty utensils were lying around in the kitchen slab. The server girl was standing in the corner talking over her phone while a man was preparing my order, and in amidst watching a video, every corner of the kitchen seemed greasy and dirty. The condition was far worse than the rest of the restaurant. The man took out something, and as he was grinding some sort of spices, I saw some cockroaches getting in, and the person was so busy on their phone, he didn't even notice what got into the blender. I almost threw up with this level of carelessness and unhygienic condition. Staying there any longer was not an option for me anymore. As I turned around and strode out the door, it grabbed the cashier's attention. He kept calling for me saying my order was almost done but there was no way I would eat that any longer. I did puke right after exiting the restaurant, and I called the health department to file a report over this, sending them the video I had shot. Walking back to my apartment, I couldn't get those nasty scenes out of my mind that I had seen there. After that day, I could never eat Popeye's chicken ever again, nor am I able to eat takeout without knowing the condition of the restaurant. Hell, even I don't want to eat from them anymore. And hearing what you just told me, I think I don't feel so good. Leia held a hand over his stomach and said with a pale, nauseated face, I'm a 16-year-old female working as a customer care manager of front of house for McDonald's. Now, where I am from, when you are front of the house, you are required to wear a light strip top, a yellow neck scarf, and a pencil skirt just below the knee which has a small split of the back. I always buttoned my shirt right up to the top, so I always looked very modest, and I would never say a McDonald's uniform is attractive. Anyway, when I worked at McDonald's, I always put my all into everything I did. So I knew tills, drive through drinks, serving, etc. I have also always been someone that will happily have a conversation with someone to make the experience more enjoyable, and hopefully make them want to come back. I was working on Tills when the Creeper came through the door. He was a tall blonde bodybuilder, at least 50, though he came to the till and ordered didn't look very happy. So I asked the obvious question, how was your day, etc. He made small talk and we got chatting about both of our dates. After that, he tells me it's nice to see someone smile around here. Everyone else is grumpy. Nice enough compliment. I was used to it. He was right. Not many people here enjoyed this job. He starts coming in once a week on a Wednesday morning. Each morning he would come in, he would have a chat. If I was on the floor front of house, we would sit and chat at a table. And my managers were fine with this, as I knew it made each customer experience unique. We got to know each other's names. His name was Michael. I started college on a Wednesday and Thursday and worked at McDonald's part-time, so my shifts changed. I worked Mondays, 
Tuesdays, and Saturdays, instead of Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And sometimes extra days if you need me. Michael started coming in Mondays every day to find when I was working. First red flag. But I figured he's just lonely and needs someone to talk to. Anyway, he worked out my shift pattern and came in on Tuesday instead after asking me why I wasn't on Wednesday, because he missed out chats. He'd do this thing where he'd let someone else go in front of him. If it meant that he could come to my till instead, he would wait to one side to get served by me. Odd, but I didn't think too much of it. Just thought he was a man that likes to be served by someone with a smile and had taken a liking to me. Again, we chatted when he came in. And this is where it got a bit more weird. We were sat down talking and he decided to really open up to me. He told me how him and his wife were going through a messy divorce. He started going into the detail of why he had to punch his son. Now this guy was big. Like he looked like a bodybuilder. I can't remember exactly what had happened, but he had ended up smacking his wife too, I think. And here he was telling me about it. I'm no counselor after all, after proceeding to tell me how big his house was. Probably to try to grip my attention. He started telling me how he was living in the basement of the house that he owned, and it wasn't fair. I'm going to hit her again if this carries on. Apparently, the wife and son wanted him out, and they were going to have it and not pay him for blah, blah, blah. He wasn't letting that happen. His son went talk to him, blah, blah, blah. He started asking me for advice, a 16-year-old girl. I don't really know what to say, so I just sort of said, everything happens for a reason, I suppose. And as I went to get up, he asked me to sit back down. Now, I had already been sat down for nearly half an hour, and I know that I said my managers don't mind, but that's pushing it a little bit. So I told him I really had to go. He carried on trying to get me to stick back down, but let me go in the end. Now, this may seem totally unrelated, but trust me, it'll make sense later on. In McDonald's, you have the source pumps, right? Well, they're connected to a big bag of sauce which has a pop-up in the front of it. You basically pop the tube into the popper on the back, but this thing is fiddly. It can take me about 10 minutes just to get it connected. Then to put the new bag in and hold on the side is another 5 minutes. It's a nightmare. Right back to the story. The sauce had run out and I had to fiddle about getting it where the sauce dispenser is right opposite from where Michael always sits. I could feel eyes burning into the back as I did this, and any time I turned around, he would be looking at me and just smile. It made me feel a fair bit uncomfortable, but hey, it's my job. And you deal with this stuff all the time. Trust me, he's not the first person. I've had perving on my bomb. He came back a few more times, and each time I felt more and more uneasy. He started being a bit more personal, telling me he thought I was a pretty young girl, and we should meet up for coffee at some point, and I politely declined. Michael then said, Can I ask you something personal? Depends what it is. I can't promise I'll answer. Are you a virgin? I'm not answering that. What size are your boobs? I have a boyfriend and I'm not comfy answering these questions. Do you love your boyfriend? Would you leave your boyfriend for me? My boyfriend's behind the counter. I don't think he would be very happy with you asking me questions like that. Just make sure he treats you right. You are a lovely girl. Anyway, I won't be coming back here for a while, so can I have your number? I don't think my boyfriend would be happy with that either. After that, I go to the back room to calm myself as this was very unnerving for me. He was an older guy being very strange and asking super inappropriate questions of me. He knew my age, as I had told him previously. The day continues. He had left. I finished and went on. 
When I woke up the next morning, I had a message on WhatsApp, a message on Facebook, and a friend request on there, and an Instagram follow. It was Michael. I don't know how, but he had found all my personal accounts just through my first name. The only way I can think of him finding out is by asking a colleague what my surname is and getting my number off one of them. Maybe he was friendly with one of the other workers and got my number from them. I don't know. He had messaged me, saying how he needed to see more of my pictures. My Facebook and insert set the private. But he saw the main pictures of them and my WhatsApp photo. He had sent another message about how he loved looking at my ass when I was bent over crawling on the floor to fix the sauce bags. I don't know if the split in my skirt was revealing, but I don't think it was saying all these things he would love to do to me. At that point, I knocked out and blocked him on everything. I still get messages, not sexual though, from other accounts he has made. Wishing me a Merry Christmas, etc. Even though he should have gotten the gist of me not wanting to talk to him. Luckily for me, I moved away a week or so after that happened. So Michael, let's not meet again. I was 19 years old at the time. I had a really good opportunity to go to college, but things fell through a couple of months into it, and basically, I wasn't allowed to go back at that college. I'm not going to go into the details, but I found myself stuck. I was living at home with my parents and working at McDonald's most of the time. I was really disappointed in myself, especially because I didn't have anyone else to blame but myself. I seemed to be your typical college dropout that ended up working at fast food. But while I was working there, I had a couple of really strange experiences. So the first one happened like this. There was this really creepy customer. He was an old man, and he just seemed like the most insane individual ever. You just have to think of the physical embodiment of Florida Man. He always wore this bathroom robe with a stained white t-shirt underneath. Or shoes. He had these really old Nikes that seemed like they had been completely covered in mud and never washed. Everywhere he stepped, there was some residue coming off of his shoes. I don't know how far he lived, but this guy came in to eat at McDonald's four or five times a day for as long as I worked there. I never personally had any horrible experiences with him. It wasn't like he was this unruly customer. He always asked for extra ketchup, but it's not like that was a crime or anything. The story is weird because I remember talking about him with some of my co-workers I had one friend there that I became rather close with. I remember talking with her about this creepy guy that had just came in to eat McDonald's all the time wearing his pajamas. When you work with the public, there are so many people and faces that you see all the time, and none of them mean anything, it's just another customer. But when you have someone like this, it almost makes the job a little bit more bearable, as weird as that might sound, a little bit more consistency to the job. Plus, making jokes about someone like that was kind of fun. But there was one day when the jokes weren't funny anymore, because he stopped coming in. They couldn't find out why either. I mean, when you see someone multiple times a day, every day for months on end, you get a little surprised when they stop showing up. It all just seemed, I don't know, unusual. I remember talking to my friend about it. Neither of us could imagine why he stopped. I remember getting a phone call at 2 in the morning that night, though. I guess my friend had gotten curious and looked around online. She's a bit of an insomniac. I guess he had been arrested on multiple drug charges. She had found a picture of him in the public database for our county's police department. In the mugshot, he was wearing that exact same bathrobe that we always saw him wearing. That was interesting. Really weird to think that someone I saw and interacted with multiple times a day was an actual dealer. But I guess that was that. My other experience working at McDonald's was really bad. Not going to lie to you, it really freaks me out and really made me question humanity. So it happened like this, right? I was working the graveyard shift. It must have been around 12am and we didn't have any customers. 
We already cleaned all the machines as much as we could, and there really wasn't anything to do. We lived in a smaller community, so there weren't too many people coming in to eat at such a late hour. We had a few here and there, but we were mostly just sitting around, particularly slow this night. I remember going over to check the garbage cans for the other side of the store. Occasionally, we would forget to empty that garbage pail. It was directly behind a booth and out of sight from the area we normally worked in. I remember going over there and there were two big bags of garbage that needed to be taken out. They were too heavy to take out at the same time, so I did what any sane person would do. I carried one out at a time. I remember bringing the first one. I threw it into the dumpster and I remember hurting my back a little when I did it. I went for a little bit of a theatrical throw and really felt it there. I went back into the store to get the second bag of garbage and I made my way outside. I got about 10 feet away from the dumpster when I saw something that shocked me. I dropped the bag of garbage. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a mutilated puppy. Its entire snout had been cut off. I wasn't sure if it was alive or not. It wasn't moving or anything. I took a step closer to try to see a little bit more and I just felt my heart drop into my stomach. It was the most horrifying thing I'd ever seen in person. It was definitely dead. It wasn't leaning up against the dumpster and it was just a horrifying thing to see. I ran back inside and asked my coworkers what we should do. We decided to call the police but they didn't really help much. We were really freaked out at who could have possibly done this and why they would put the puppy there of all places. The part that still freaks me out is that whoever had done this had been waiting for me to go back inside of the building and in the few seconds before I came back out, put it right next to the dumpster. I figured they must have been watching me. Didn't know what else to think about it though. Our McDonald's didn't have an outside camera other than the drive through so... There was no hope of trying to identify the person that did this, but it still makes me sick to my stomach to think what that person could be like.